Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm gonna be filming my final video of 2018. I'm really excited to film this video because this video is showing you all the books I read in 2018 along with some really fun stats about the year. You know, stats videos are one of my favorite videos to make because it really just brings out that inner nerd in me and I love seeing all the numbers and like the different things I was reading this year. And yeah, it's just a great time. So I'm going to be starting with the stats portion of this video and then I'll put a timestamp in the description for the portion of the video where I start showing you every single book I read this year, if that's what you're here for. So yeah, before I jump into my stats and charts, Part of the video I want to just mention some quick stats from my end of the year on Goodreads page so I read a total of 107 books in the year of 2018 I read a total of 37,602 pages this year the shortest book I read was 48 pages long it was Oliver Wild Wonder by Sarah Kay and the longest book I read this year is A Little Life that was 815 pages the most popular book I read this year is Fahrenheit 451 that was also read by 1.4 million other people. And the least popular book I read this year was The Felix, which was only read by 74 other people. My average rating for 2018 was 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is exactly the same as last year, I'm pretty sure, so it's pretty consistent. The highest rated book that I read on Goodreads is Verity by Colleen Hoover with a 4.56 average rating. The first book I read this year was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. And then the last book I read this year was Brief Answers to the Big Questions by Stephen Hawking. So starting with the stats, I have a couple different charts that I want to show you for this year. So the first one is going to be the months for the year, showing you how many books I read per month this year. So my most books read in the year were 12 books in March and 12 books in August. March I read a lot because I knew I was going to be starting university on the second day of April, so I wanted to read as much as I possibly could before I went to university. And then August was the month of the book Tubathon, so it forced me to read a lot more than I usually would. My lowest read months are June with seven books and November with seven books, which could be explained because in June I was wrapping up my quarter at university and it was like a very stressful month. And then in November I was moving out of my parents house and into my apartment and I just had so much shit going on in November. So. That can explain those months, but I mean, as you can see this year, I read an average of like eight to nine books per month this year, which is like slightly lower than it was last year, I think, but like, that's why I also read a slightly lower number of books for the whole year. The next chart that I wanted to look at is the different kinds of books I was reading throughout the year. So this is whether I was reading physical books, ebooks, or audiobooks. So as you can see from this chart this year, I actually did read mostly physical books with 70 physical books, 22 ebooks, and 14 audiobooks, which is good because I want to read most more of the books that I actually own. This year my audiobooks is pretty low at only 14 because I was only listening to audiobooks for the brief period that I was going to university, so so only for like two or three months. Really happy that I'm mostly reading physical books, that's awesome. Uh, the next chart I want to look at is ratings throughout the year. So this is the chart of 1 through 5 star ratings. I had 25 5 star books, 33 4 star books, 16 3 star books, 27 2 star books, and 4 1 star books. So I think that's an all time low for 1 star books throughout the year. I mean I only had 4 which is really awesome. And then 5 star books I had 25 which is actually pretty high I'm pretty sure. I think last year it was only like 19 or 20 or something so that's pretty awesome. I know I did have a few rereads this year, so that contributed to that, but still. I mean, the highest one is a four-star rating, which isn't that surprising to me at all. <laughs> all right, and the next chart I want to look at is male versus female authors. I read 76 female authors and only 30 male authors, but I still think that this male authors list is a little bit higher than last year, but I'm always going to tend to read more female authors because I read more romance. It just it's just the way it is I guess I'm not really surprised by these numbers at all <laughs> the next chart I want to look at is age group so this is breaking books down into either young adult new adult or adult and with adult I include any nonfiction or literary fiction or stuff like that that's not really classified as either of those three but for young adult books I have 15 new adult books I have 25 and adult books I have 65 
which again, you know, I've mentioned a few times that this year I just haven't been in the mood for young adult anymore, so it doesn't really surprise me that that number's so low. New adult is usually my romances, so of course there's like 25 and 65 adults. I'm mostly reading adult material now, which is really exciting for me. The next one is what year the books were published in. So I have 2018, 2017, 2019, and before that. So for 2018 releases, I read 58 2018 releases. I read 16 2017 releases. And books that were published before 2017, I have 28 of those. And then in 2019, I have four books that I read this year that are coming out in 2019 that were ARCs. I wanted to look up specifically the oldest book that I read this year. I thought it was going to be The Left Hand of Darkness, which came out in 1969, but then I realized it's actually Fahrenheit 451, which first published in 1953. But yeah, I mean, you can clearly see with uh, 58 2018 releases, I'm reading new releases the most because it just makes sense because, you know, I'm reading a lot of my Book of the Month books and those are new releases and I'm getting sent ARCs, which are new releases. It just makes sense that I'm mostly going to be reading new releases. All right, the next chart I want to look at is new authors that I discovered this year or authors that I read before, like what I'm reading the most of, because it's interesting for me to see if I'm picking up authors that I already know or if I'm picking up authors that I've never read before. So for new authors, I have 64, and for authors I've read before, I have 42. And I'm kind of surprised that the authors I've read before list is this high this year. I'm pretty sure last year it was like a lot lower. They're pretty close. Like, I mean, I know I do have a lot more new authors, which is good because I do want to discover new authors, but I'm really happy that that read before list is so high. Like, that's really cool. All right. And the last chart chart I have to show you is the genres that I was reading throughout this year. So I have 10 different genres that I want to show you. Here they all are. So I read 15 contemporary books this year, 31 romances, 27 thrillers, 9 sci-fis, 5 horrors, 4 literary fictions, 8 non-fictions, 3 fantasies, 2 historical fictions, and 2 dystopians. On this list, when I say fantasy, I mean like magical realism or like time travel fantasy. I don't mean like hardcore fantasy books. I'm sure no one's surprised that romance and romances and thrillers are my highest two genres that I read. Contemporary is also pretty high up there, but I was really surprised this year with the amount of sci-fi and horror I read. I mean, I was really like branching out my taste this year. I mean, not that I don't like sci-fi and horror, like I definitely do, but I just don't tend to read a lot of it. But this year I definitely like feel like I gave a few of those books a chance, which is awesome. I read 17 of my book of the month books this year, which is awesome. I reread four books this year which is kind of low, but I, again, I'm going to make that a priority in 2019 to reread more often. And then this year, I participated in the book two-a-thon and the spook-a-thon for the first time. So this was my third time participating in the book two-a-thon this year and my first time ever participating in the spook-a-thon. And it was a ton of fun. Like, I think I want to make that one an annual read-a-thon that I participated in. But in 2019, I would like to participate in more read-a-thons if I can. So if you know of any really cool ones, let me know. So yeah, that's going to do it for the charts part of this video. Now I'm going to jump into showing you all the books that I read in 2018. So if you're curious about that, then stick around. But if not, which I know some people are like, that's very tedious and repetitive and you don't really care. So if you don't care, then thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great 2019 and I will see you soon with a new video. But if you're here to see all the books that I read this year, then Let's begin. These are the 107 books that I read in 2018. The Secret History by Donna Tartt, Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, A Million Junes by Emily Henry, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, She Regrets Nothing by Andrea Dunlop, Love, Life, and the List by Casey West, Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, Two Girls Down by Louisa Luna, Sourdough by Robin Sloan, him by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. This was a reread. Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Keeper Safe by K.A. Tucker. The Apocalypse of Elena Mendoza by Sean David Hutchinson. War Cross by Marie Lu. The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. Bone Music by Christopher Rice. Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover. All Our Wild Wonder by Sarah Kay. Behind the Bars by Brittany C. Cherry. Off the Ice by Avon Gale. Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This one is also a reread. 
The Sphelix by Jay Flaherty, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, Providence by Caroline Kepnes, Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty, All the Beautiful Lies by Peter Swanson, Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey, The Humans by Matt Haig, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren, Helium by Rudy Francisco, The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead, The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis, Radio Silence by Alice Oseman, The Perfect Mother by Amy Malloy, The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish, The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin, The Year of the Flood by Margaret Atwood, Wildflower by Drew Barrymore, Tell Me Lies by Carola Lovering, Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nuevel, Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake, The Pisces by Melissa Broder, Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Allier Sines. This one is also a reread. The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, The Proposal by Jasmine Gulroy, The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan, The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, The Line Below by Ali Dean, Waking Gods by Sylvain Nuevel, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, The Light We Lost by Jill Santapalo, I Found You by Lisa Jewell, Boy Erased by Gerard Conley, Getting Schooled by Emma Chase, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, Blind Kiss by Renee Carlino, 180 Seconds by Jessica Park, The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata, Dear Aaron by Mariana Zapata, Looker by Laura Sims, Trust by Casey Diem, An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lapina, From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren, You by Caroline Kepnes, which is also a reread, Only Human by Sylvain Nuevel, Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pinborough, Evidence of the Affair by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Book of Essie by Megan McLean Ware, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, When Katie Met Cassidy by Camille Perry, The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas, Vengeful by V.E. Schwab, Sadie by Courtney Summers, What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli, Black Hole by Charles Burns, The Lies We Told by Camille Away, Watching You by Lisa Jewell, The Girl He Used to Know by Tracy Garvis Graves, The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, Until the Last Star Fades by Jacqueline Middleton, For Better and Worse by Margot Hunt, This Is How It Always Is by Lori Frankel, The Witch Doesn't Burn in This One by Amanda Lovelace, The Dark Between Stars by Atticus Poetry, Fight or Flight by Samantha Young, The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, The Liar's Room by Simon Lelick, One Day in December by Josie Silver, An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekunin, Verity by Colleen Hoover, No Exit by Taylor Adams, Colty by Mariana Zapata, The Chase by L. Kennedy, Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke, and Brief Answers to the Big Questions by Stephen Hawking. This is a stack of all the physical books that I read in the year of 2018. And there is the flip side of it, all the beautiful spines. <laughs> this is what 107 books looks like with including my 14 audiobooks and 22 ebooks. The flipped books represent those. And yeah, it's 107 books. All right, and that is all of them. Crazy, huh? Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching as always. And let me know in the comments, did you read any of these books that I read? Did you agree with my ratings? Did you disagree with my ratings? What were the best books that you read this year? Let me know all of the things. And thank you guys so much for watching as always. I will see you soon in a new video in 2019. Bye.